welcome to Your Questions Answered. I'm Orla Tobin, a Senior Director at Good Body Wealth Management, and I'm delighted to be joined here today by our Chief Economist, Dermot O'Leary. Thank you so much for this. Um, your Questions Answered is a new quarterly video where we ask Dermot your most pressing and pertinent questions in relation to the economy, the market outlook, and what to expect in the short term. We put a number of questions on LinkedIn, and we asked our followers to vote for the questions that they wanted answered the most. So let's get started with our top three with Dermot. Are you ready to kick off the first one? Let's go. Great. So the first question at the top of the poll was, has inflation peaked or is it just getting started? Well, I think the short answer is it has peaked. I mean, if you look at the US inflation rate, really peaked last summer, so quite some time ago. If you look at Europe, peaked around October, November of last year and has come down quite a bit. But it's a bit more complicated than, than that. Sure. I mean, when you think about the drivers of inflation, there's uh, inflation drivers like supply side factors, like the supply blockages that we saw at the start of last year and in, even into the middle of last year, like the energy price effects, like the commodity effects, they're coming off. So, so they're okay. factors really that policymakers don't really have any control over. So, so that's why we're seeing the headline rate of inflation come down and I think that will happen throughout this year, especially given what's happened happened to energy prices. That will feed into the CPI rate. What's the most the more concerning element of inflation at the moment is what you'd call cyclical factors. Uh, and these are the factors that central bankers and policymakers do have control over mm -hmm. by way of fiscal policy or, or indeed interest rate policy. And that's for central bankers when you think about what they can do mm -hmm. to bring down inflation uh, they can raise interest rates higher and bring it down. And really, that's the focus now. I mean, when you think about the rate of inflation, even core inflation, which is the, the number that they can focus on and they can uh, influence, it's still running at over 6% in both the US and the euro area. That's mm. too high. Yeah. Uh, they need to get it to 2% over the medium term. Um, and I, I think because of that, I think that's why there's more pressure on interest rates still to come from, 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 from central bankers. So headline, yes, uh, but core inflation pressures are still quite intense uh, in developed economies at the moment. Okay. Very insightful. Thanks, Dermot. So the second question, the top of the poll, um, will we see a deceleration in inflation without a recession? I think it's too early to tell okay. whether we're out of the woods in terms of the inflation risk. I, I think certainly when you think about the narrative in the markets at the start of this year, particularly in, in January. It was about, you know, the inflation genie is back in the bottle. Um, you know, inflation is going to come down throughout this year and thus central bankers will have, can uh, cut interest rates. Um, I don't think that's the case. Um, it's likely that some of the major economies, such as the euro area and indeed the UK, have avoided recession in the short term. Indeed, when you look at the US, I think the timing of a recession in the US is probably being, being pushed out. But the kind of factors that lead to recession, uh, particularly in the US, it's, it's interest rate policy. Interest rates only start to rise in the US at the start of last year. It takes somewhere between 12 and indeed 24 months for it to feed through to mm. real e economic activity. So we haven't seen the full effects of those ri that rise in interest rates. So we don't think we're out of the woods yet. And, and indeed, as I said in response to the first question, really, we need to see uh, slower rates of economic growth to pull down on inflation, particularly to uh, limit the wage growth that we're seeing. Um, so I, I think we're, we're, we're likely to see rolling recession still as we go through 2023 and possibly into 2024 when you look at the US economy. So some way to go yet. Okay, so the third question, the top of the poll, um, and bringing us back home, I guess was closer to home. What is the short-term outlook for the Irish economy, Dermot? Well, I suppose you, you have to take account of, of the international factors that we just talked about, yeah, first of, of all. And it would have been our view at the start of the year when we published our, our health check. Um, we talked about Irish war chests. You know, a play on words, obviously, in relation to the risks that are out there around mm -hmm. the war in Ukraine, and that's still an ongoing risk. Uh, we are seeing lower rates of growth, whether it be a recession or not in, in developed economies just yet, is obviously a point of debate, but certainly it's lower growth rates than we've seen for, for the last number of years at least. So that's the kind of the international backdrop for Ireland, mm. and Ireland obviously depends on that uh, in terms of our uh, very, very large multinational export sector. But war chests really refers to the resources that Ireland has 
to withstand some of these international shocks, you know, particularly in terms of inflation. You know, the two war chests that we talk about in relation to the Irish economy is one, the government finances. Ireland mm -hmm. is running a budget surplus, the largest budget surplus in all of Europe. So the Irish government can, and indeed they have, even with announcements last week, uh, use some of those resources to help households and businesses through this period. Um, so that's one uh, you know, particular positive aspect that we have. The second war chest that we talk about is households. So households, obviously, across the developed world, built up significant savings during the pandemic period. Ireland was no different, um, but the scale of it was. So Ireland, Irish households built up the largest amount of excess savings over the pandemic period, which can be used and also household savings ratios are coming from record high levels. So both of those things offset some of those international factors. So relative to other countries, Ireland is, is in a relatively good space in this very, very uncertain world. So I think we will good. see growth in excess of the rest of, of, of Europe, but again, slower than we've seen in the last number of years. Okay, so some good news at the end. Dermot, thank you so much for answering the questions today. It's been great. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact your relationship manager. Thank you for joining myself and Dermot today, and we'll see you in the next quarter.